very pretty. <laughs> Please don't. I love you. Everybody, thank you for tuning in. This is Dave. I'm joined with my co-host Brandon, and we are super excited today because joining us today is legendary filmmaker, producer, podcaster, business mogul, the owner and founder of Full Moon Features, the one and only Charles Band. If you like all things horror and want to get the best horror news, interviews, and reviews, like, subscribe, and ring that bell to follow us and satisfy all your horror needs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you you so got to add Survivor in there because to be in this <laughs> business this long, that's much more of an accomplishment. Yeah, oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Charles, I have to say, you're probably the hardest working man in the industry. You got into <laughs> films in 1970 with Empire Films. You would release two films a month. Then you, uh, when that folded, you created Full Moon in the same year. And you're still pumping out crazy movie classics to this day. How has it been? How's this ride been? It's been bumpy you know i uh, read the pandemic we never slowed down we slowed down a little bit mm-hmm. uh, harper collins approached me and said hey we know you had a crazy life and would you think about writing a, an autobiography and then they coupled me with this fantastic writer because i i can tell my stories i'm not really a writer and the, the book came out a few years ago it's doing really well and i guess there's an option now for a movie we'll see but it's called confessions of a puppet master And I mean, yes, my whole life has been about making movies, but, you know, it's just a story of an entrepreneur, you know, ups and terrible downs and all sorts of crazy stuff that happens. So you just keep, uh, it's forward motion because the minute you slow down, you're kind of screwed, you know, then you grow old and then you get sad and then you die. Mm -hmm. That's basically it. I don't want to get (laughs) depressing. Wow. (laughs) That's kind of the sum it up. Yeah. 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 That's the, that's the short story right there. Um, so this is probably a loaded question. It might be a little bit challenging to answer. Um, I just was curious because, I mean, you've had you have such an extension, uh, extensive list of films that you've worked on or been connected right. to. Um, I was curious if you could share any of the highlights or films that, you know, you feel you'd recommend to anyone and everyone today. And also on the flip side, what are some of like the challenges or some films that just really you wish it had gone in a different direction? <laughs> well, that's yeah, 20 minutes and I'll be the end of the show. So, um, well, you know, people ask me, um, you know, do I have nightmares and monsters and, you know, am I dreaming like all that shit? And what is your biggest fear? And my biggest fear is lack of funds. Cause you know, if you're making movies and you run out of dough, mm-hmm. you're in trouble. And that's happened a number of times, you know, or in the early days, um, you know, you you sometimes needed to raise money and you got involved with weirdo investors. And I've, I've done that in 20 years. But back in the day, you kind of learn from your mistakes. And nothing's worse than being sort of on the front line on a project with people relying on you and you're producing and or directing. And then suddenly the money guy says, you know, I'm, I just I don't want to do this anymore. And then it's like, wait a minute, I, you know, I'm, I'm committed. I've got you know a crew here. I got people I have to pay. So. You know, those are some of the the hard times. And the book is, I think, is good in that it, it kind of shows, I guess, ultimately, perseverance sort of wins the day. But but yeah, a lot of difficult times and a lot of amazing times. Now we're kind of in a pretty, uh, let me turn this thing on, pretty amazing period. Um, again, it's very different than the way it was uh, with direct-to-video. Direct-to-video was still a better era. Mm. You know, a lot of the movies that, we all grew up with that you guys grew up with movies you know that are, in many cases are being rebooted or there's 8,000 sequels these are all films made only because directed video existed as a business yeah. uh, today unfortunately you, you don't have that you know I'm, I'm lucky in that I've got a library and you know I've kind of done this long enough but there's not enough money currently in this digital world to you know fund these low budget movies and have a hope and prayer making a profit so the landscape's different, but many times, to kind of slowly answer your question, um, yeah, it would have been nicer in some cases, in many cases, to have a little more money in your budget so we could have done more things. But, you know, you do the best you can, and it's not its not a matter of complaining. It's just, look, this is what I've got. So you have to create, you know, clever, hopefully clever, story-driven 
um, projects and movies that people will be entertained with. Uh, and ironically, in, in recent years, I think so many of the big Hollywood movies are so numbing and, and so not interesting as far as, you know, the people on the screen. I mean, you know, the, in the old days, I always tell the story when I was a kid and I was looking at movies like, you know, like Jason and the Argonauts and Seven Voyages Sinbad and some of the old horror movies. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the effects were like a sprinkling, you know, well, and you, you, you were so into watching them, but you were driven through the story because of the characters, because of what was going on, because people you cared about. And today it's the flip side. So today it's, you know, you go to these big movies and of course you wonder when the fuck is this thing going to be over? You know, it's like yeah. an ending and an ending, but you don't really care. You know, you're in kind of a CGI world. So that's a bit to our advantage because we can make, although very, very small movies, you know, movies that hopefully, you know, maybe one out of every three resonates and stands the test of time and, because uh, they're people you care about or it's a concept you or something you have never seen before. And so I think we have a chance to, you know, still do interesting work to fill the gaps, of course, between, you know, once in a while, the studios make a great movie. I mean, you know, it, it happens um, not too often, but it does. It does happen. I mean, you know, movies like Get Out, one of the best horror films of all time. Yeah. Sixth Sense, you know, these are clever movies going back to, you know, classics like, you know, The Exorcist and The Old Man and, but, you know, you can always see the same scene and the same canvas so many times. And, you know, Blumhouse does an amazing job. But, you know, those if you've seen like 10 or 20 of those movies, they're, they're OK. And the girl, the ceiling, the thing is, like, oh, OK, I, you know, it's just too much. So I'm rambling. But uh, you know, there's a bunch of movies I've made that I'm really proud of. And a lot of them are movies that a lot of people still haven't discovered. They're not the franchises that people yeah. know about. Mm -hmm. yeah, oddball movies like Head of the Family and Hideous, yeah. weird ass movies that that no one's made before and no one's made since. Like, you know, how many movies have this big head that you know controls <laughs> a family of like bizarro siblings? And you know, so I prefer to do that kind of movie, which luckily sticks around. And you know, back in the '80s, for instance, it was all about you know slasher movies, you know, Friday the Thirteenth and Halloween and. And I never made any of those. I mean, I, I probably should have. I could have made some money because that was what was in vogue. But, you know, it just wasn't appealing to me. I like movies with the uh, creatures and monsters and, you know, weird shit happening. happening. And, and boobies. That's another yeah. fucking <laughs> boobies. Yeah. What happened to boobies in these horror movies? You know, <laughs> some scene there, they're banging and the girl like is like this and she's holding. I mean, this is all baloney, you know. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, so Charles, also you um with so many creators in your family, what are some important things you have learned in this business growing up? Well, um, actually, well, you, you know, look, it's I didn't have any formal training. I was lucky mm -hmm. that I grew up on a movie set. My dad made movies and and so I understood the craft and he had me apprentice doing all sorts of stuff. But, you know, as soon as I could run away from high school, I mean, I wanted to make movies and I wanted to do things. I didn't want to sit more in, in the classroom. So, you know, I did have the advantage of having, you know, the training, but exactly at the same time when it was time for me to go out and do my thing, my, my dad's fortunes fell and, and we moved. I grew up in Italy, believe it or not. So mm. I came back to the States and, um, and, you know, just crawled my way up. I started working at a men's clothing store selling mainly ties and I'm completely colorblind. So, you know, I'm a good salesperson, but you know, I fucked <laughs> that up pretty soon. So yeah, you, know, you do what you can do to make a buck and then you just jump in and, and you either sink or swim. So um, it's, it's yeah, to some degree, it's in your blood. I mean, my mm -hmm. dad was an artist. His father was a well-known painter, um, sculptor. Um, you know, my brother is a really wonderful composer. So many of the full moon movies that people know over the years, he did the music, you know, these mm -hmm. are memorable themes. And, you know, my oldest son is a rock and roller. He had two number one hits. He toured the country with Santana. He was a group called The Calling. So mm -hmm. it's just like really in the blood. I, I don't know how that happens. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's because they kids grow up and they watch what you do and they go, oh, that's cool. Or it really is somehow, in you know, there's some bit of, a little bit of magic, but um I'm not sure how to answer the question more than just say, you know, you just, um, you know, it's like a trade. I mean, people grow up and, you know, the old world, I mean, I'm, I'm into art and antiques and stuff. And, you know, back in the day, there were these amazing shops where there were sculptors who carved crazy things out of wood or marble and, you know, and, and mm -hmm. 
and the the sons and daughters usually the sons the daughters were wives and bore children they went on and you know practiced and learned that craft and you know so you had a lineage of carpenters or sculptors or painters so maybe that's part of what it is okay so I'm curious what artists or filmmakers have inspired you for your films and also maybe even just like your career model. Career model, Roger Corman is a friend and he was amazing. He was freaking 97 and he's still trucking, you know, he's yeah. great. I did this. Um, I'm not sure if I'll do it again because I'm too busy, but for a few months I did this uh, called the uh, full moon freak show. Charlie Vance full moon freak show it was a, Yep. they call it a podcast i like to think of it more like a vidcast because we shot it with three cameras uh, i didn't want to do any zoom stuff i just wanted to get people in our little green screen room and you know be one-on-one -on -one and stuff like that so i called on a lot of friends and you know my first guest was john carpenter who i go back with like a million years and that was great and corman came in and everyone from john waters to cassandra peterson so that was that was super fun i can't do that anymore just because it takes a lot of time as you guys know this is not you can't just do it you know with your yeah. left but um i totally forgot the question what was the oh, question no so I was, you know just curious as far as like filmmaking and artists like who's inspired you uh, oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah okay so um roger corman as far as an entrepreneur in the business in the low budget arena i can't yeah. think of anyone else other than roger who's you know and we're similar in that when he began, like 20 years before me, it was all B-movie, B-side, double bill, theatrical, you know, you know drive-ins. And then he morphed really well into the video world. I caught the tail end of that in the early 70s. And then, you know, I was really the first, I was the first independent home video company back in the Stone Age days. And and uh, the company was called Media. Then it became Media. And I started a company called Wizard Video. This is all the late 70s, early 80s. So, um, you know, but Corman very, in a very similar way, uh, just kept making kind of the same movie and the medium changed. And so, yeah, I would say as a, a model for career, and as far as directors, I mean, you know, my first language is Italian. So we can do the whole, this whole interview in Italian. Right? That would be really fun for nobody, <laughs> uh, I'm sure. But, um, you know, I grew up in Italy. So Fellini and Pasolini and a lot of the horror film directors were great. And then, of course, the classics, you know, the, First movies I saw as a little kid, my dad showed me were all the Universal films, so Frankenstein and the nice. Werewolf. And yeah, that kind of starts you off, and they're they're pretty benign by today's standards. But as a little kid back then, they were freaky. I mean, sewing body parts together and lightning makes this dude come alive, and you know, all that stuff was amazing. Then movies like you know Jason and the Argonauts, or, you know, all the Ray Harryhausen movies, Seven Boy to Sinbad, those were amazing as well so italian films italian filmmakers and then eventually you know i mean spielberg's amazing you know the career is it's just unbeatable uh, kubrick i mean the shining is one of mm. the greatest horror films of all time it's too bad he and stephen king didn't get along because of that because king mm -hmm. is also an incredible writer yeah uh, you know so all that was was uh, you know influential yeah and like you touched on earlier like us growing up with these films i have to say you know full moon features is definitely one of my favorite streaming services that i have Thank you, Thank you can't you you can't beat the price and you guys add in cool like box set gifts for new members how does it feel to have all your movies locked into this platform for full moon fans it feels great but whoever's listening to this and not a subscriber well what the fuck are you waiting for you know exactly like steal in town it's like a penny a movie or some shit yeah. <laughs> and all the new movies we make are released there tons of behind the scene footage and it also keeps the few remaining independents alive because if not for mm -hmm. full features if not for my library i would i'd probably make a movie a year and struggle and survive but you know mm -hmm. it's it's the video store of, the, of today there, there's no other way to there would be no other way for movies that I, the movies, the type of movies I've made over the years to be exhibited. The problem is back in the video store days, it was a pretty even playing field. You know, uh, I was, you know, lucky enough, maybe clever enough to make pretty cool direct to video movies that kind of felt like theatrical films. Maybe it was a movie that you missed theatrically. Um, but the great thing about the business back in the day was. You know, if the movie was credible, let's say it was a horror film, um, you know, we had a relationship with Blockbuster and Hollywood for many years. Paramount was our distributor. 
So if the movie was okay, it would get on the horror film shelf. It would be next to Terminator and, and you know, whatever. Mm. Aliens, it was up there. Oh, look, Puppet Master. I don't know about it, but it looks cool. So the, the, the sleight of hand, the trick was to make the art and the cover, the, um, the title feel... You know, not like B movie, like cool, like oh shit, I, I want to rent that movie. Yeah. So you were among the big movies of the time. So today that's gone. So today there's no there's no shelf like in the video store. You got to search a movie online. You know, you know when you, if you are on Apple TV or Roku or wherever you are, and you want to see what the new movies are, you're not going to see a full moon movie. You'll see all the big Hollywood tentpole mm -hmm. movies. You'll see the occasional art film. Uh, but you won't see any of the better independent films. You won't see any full moon films. So it's very, very different than the, the video store days where, you know, you had a shot, you got up there. And then of course, if it rented, it became successful. You keep making sequels. Yeah. Mm -hmm. keep I going. vividly remember seeing the puppet master, uh, you know, box on the shelf and just being yeah. so intrigued as a kid. Like, um, that's I think that was my introduction to the Puppet Master movies was seeing right. the box cover and being like, I want to watch that. So, yeah. so if you were a little older and you were a kid in the late 70s, the early 80s, you would go um, to the video store, the beginning of the video business, or you go to a theater and you'd see a poster with a creature coming out of the toilet. It was called Ghoulies. Yeah. Yep. Same thing, same difference. Yes. Oh, fuck, I got to see that movie. Yep. What is exactly. that Ghoulie movie? So the, the window was always the art. Back in the Corman days, it was the poster. It was always a lurid poster, half naked chick being eaten up by some monster or tentacles. You know, that's what you wanted to see. And you know, twenty years after, then it was the video store. Same thing. You you were intrigued because Puppet Master mm -hmm. looked cool. I can't tell you how many people over the years told me that they they like you. They saw this and they thought, oh crap, I missed it. It must have been out in the theaters. Now I'm going to rent it, but yeah. you know, up in that up in Master never had one theatrical play date, never played any theaters. Mm. Yeah, now let's talk about Prime Evils because <laughs> it had its world premiere at the Fantasia Film Festival. Yeah. Fans have been waiting for this film for over 30 years. Yes, how does it feel to finally have this film completed? It feels great. Um, the irony is that yeah, the story about Prime Evils is historically, I mean, it's just. Hard to believe this, this is, you know, you hear stories about people of material, they have a script, took them 20, 30 years to make the movie. Mm -hmm. This is different. It took 20 years to shoot the movie and we shot it in 94. And then it took 30 years to finish it. This is like <laughs> the marathon. This is just, yeah. ridiculous. so the irony is that it got finished at the end of last year. And of course, my inclination, having survived this way forever is let's get it out. Let's release it. Let's put the damn thing out. But people close to me who I respect said, you know, this is so different. So much time and money has gone into this thing. You can't just release it on streaming and Blu-ray. You got to get this thing out, maybe limited theatrical. You should play the festival route. Mm -hmm. So they convinced me to do that. Now we've been accepted by, I don't know, 14 festivals. It's ridiculous. Now I'm in the festival business, which is nice, but it doesn't earn one penny. You know, it's just oh, like man. nice. So, you know, we Montreal was our first one, Fantasia. We have another one coming up. I forget the name. We're going to Sitges in October. That's the big festival in Spain. It's like the European launch. So my hope is that as we play these festivals and we get more, and the and the, the reviews have been amazing. It's like I couldn't write nicer reviews. Everyone really enjoys the movie. Then we'll figure out how best to release it. Maybe it will be October, November, of a, you know, a limited theatrical, and then it'll be out on streaming and on you know blu-ray and all the rest of it so it feels great to have finished it but the irony is by the time we release it it'll have been another year it's just like okay just another year it's like ridiculous uh, well i can't wait to check it out it's really good it's really yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. um we recently had uh ted nicolo on the show oh, okay and yeah. i mean he has been working with full moon for quite a while right yes um, he seems like such a great guy. And I was just yeah. wondering if you could talk about that relationship with, with him. Ted and I are super close friends. He worked for me starting in 1978. He um, was the editor of a movie called Tourist Trap. And we stuck close and friends since then. I mean, he edited movies. And then in the 80s, when I briefly had a big studio in Italy, he went over and made a movie called Terror Vision, which is bizarre, fun, yeah. weird movie. Um, 
and then in the early 90s, you know, he he went to Romania and we started shooting the subspecies movies and some kids movies. And um, yeah, and he got busy doing other things. I kept making movies. And then we always wanted to make a sequel to subspecies. And the, the problem is, you know, as budgets shrink and times get more difficult, you can't afford to do things that we were doing in the 80s and the early 90s. You can't send a crew to Romania for six weeks to make a movie. You know, even though Romania was a bargain, it's still very expensive to do that. So there was no way to make subspecies, the sequel, or subspecies five or whatever you want to call it, without spending a certain amount of money. So it took us literally 26 years. Of, and yeah. It's not a, a primeval story because it just took 26 years to get it made. It's not like we made yeah. it, couldn't release it. Mm-hmm. But it did take 26 years and we finally found uh, a great look. You know all this. He talked to Ted in Serbia. And mm-hmm. Ted went there with the original, the actor played Radu and Michelle. And, you know, it was a for full moon in this modern digital era where there's not a lot of money. It was a big effort. And Subsea's Blood Ride, I think, turned out really, really well. Yeah, it's a beautiful film. We yeah. we really enjoyed it. But I was just like really impressed with, you know, the cinematography and how how beautiful it looked. They did it. Really well, you know, it, it's talent. It's also having enough money to afford those locations. You know, I mean, it's it's a lot mm-hmm. of things. So. But one cool thing that will come of it is um, we we talked about this, but we finally designed this incredible uh, bloodstone artifact, which are finally going to be available hopefully next month. Uh, we did the mold, the thing. I mean, it's expensive to make. I mean, it lights up. I mean, if you're into subspecies, yeah. you're going to want this <laughs> bloodstone that's awesome. uh, one-to-one scale replica, super duper cool. So that's going to be uh, ready, I hope, in September. Okay. And then, um, after probably in November, this is another thing we're working on. You know, I'm in since I've made I've been making these movies for so many years. The most success we've ever had in the in the in the disc market was when I I kind of came up with the idea to do a um, collection of twelve Puppet Master uh, movies on Blu-ray, and the whole idea was to put him in sort of a an original two launch trunk and not a plastic thing that you can you know anybody can do. I wanted the trunk to be out of wood and metal. And of course, oh, man. very ambitious and took a long time to figure out how to do that. And we did it and we won some awards. But if you've seen it, the Puppet Master trunk, and it's really, really super beautiful. So I wanted to do the same thing with subspecies because by the time we have, with this new subspecies, subspecies blood rise, there's five subspecies. And then there's vampire journals that ties to it. And then we're going to have a disc that has a lot of, really interesting behind the scene footage no one's seen before so what do you put seven blu-rays in that would be equally as cool so we're putting in this like super ornate wood and metal coffin okay so that's nice. something that's going to be ready hope that'll be ready in november so we'll okay. you know, get the whole <laughs> we get the coffin the yeah. bloodstone and yeah, i love it I love yeah it. i can't wait to check that out but you also have these cool full moon tiny terrors, which are blind boxes filled yeah. with our favorite full moon icons. Yeah, we put up yeah. a post and people went crazy for them, and they yeah. can't wait for the release date. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. That project? So, so everything we've done so far in terms of merch and one to one scale replicas, all that we've done for. I don't want to say the collectors' market because I mean collectors collect anything and everything, but very limited runs like you know if we made i don't know a baby oopsie bobblehead we do 500 you know so it's mm-hmm. just like these are not big runs and we don't sell them almost anywhere at retail you have to get them on at a convention or you get them on our full moon uh, horror.com website and you know we've experimented a few with, with a few things more like mass market so when i decided look people have grown up with these movies let's come up with something that crosses over several movies and let's try to do something that you know you could go to find at spencer's or hot topic you know more of a retail Mm -hmm. thing and the advice was hey if you're going to do it you got to really do it well and you you should do a blind box and you know take pluck out 10 of your 30 40 most well-known characters and do a good job and the blind box thing which i knew nothing about i was like i'm in my own here i don't know (laughs) know, i'm just too cut off from all this but when i understood what it was it was really cool you know, mm-hmm. it works on every level, but if you're in a retail store, you got all these beautiful boxes, you go, crap, I want Blade, and you buy it, and it's fucking Torch, and now you buy another one, you get Blade, and yeah. eventually you collect the whole series. So I like that idea. And so we we have really some great sculptors design it, 
And you know, it's, it's taken four months on a bunch of dough, but uh, they're going to be here um, the first week of uh, October. So it's around the corner. Okay. So they'll be available on our site, Full Moon Horror, but uh, I, there's probably seven or eight retailers you will, you'll be able to find them at until they sell out because we didn't make that many. I mean, mm -hmm. whereas I would make 500 or 1,000 units of something that would be sold to fans directly through our store, the minimum run uh, for what we're doing with the blind boxing was 24,000 units. So it's a whole different number. Okay. But that fits into a thousand cases the cases of those beautiful displays you find at a store with all the boxes mm -hmm. and right now we we have about two-thirds of those committed and um the people we're talking to the reps saying you know you get ready to make some more because these, these are going to be sold out in three four weeks or, yeah you know because no one's had these out it's like it's not like you know there's so many characters in marvel and the stuff that everyone's been saturated with that you can find nine different versions and different sizes. No one's ever done this before for the full moon characters. So yeah, yeah I think it's a good assortment of some puppet master characters, subspecies, evil bong, which is our second most successful franchise. <laughs> people yeah. go, what? <laughs> yes, because people actually smoke weed in this country. Yeah, <laughs> quite a bit. This happens. So yeah, so the blind box thing, you know, the tiny terrors, it, look, it looks great. I, all the yeah. prototypes we approved a few weeks ago, they look freaking ridiculous. So. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So um, I think we got a little surprise today, actually, that I think we want to share with you. Um, we got wind of Demonic Toys Jack Attack today. Right, right. And um, that's yep. going to be hitting streaming on uh, August 25th. September 1st. Oh, okay. First. Yeah, the, the date yeah. moved a little bit. It's September first, and uh, yeah, it's just as wacky as it gets. I mean, if you saw Baby Oopsie, you saw the spin we put on Baby Oopsie just to do something. Yep. You know, you can always hire the GQ, GQ looking guy and the gal and the thing. And but Baby Oopsie, I think we 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 did something clever and unique, and I think we've done something similar, different with uh, Jack Attack. It definitely delivers on um, weird shit. That's all I can say. It's just bizarre. Yeah. See, I'm a big fan of the series of that uh, demonic toys and puppet masters. I grew up with it, right. and I was actually able to check out Jack Attack today. And I just want to say it was fucking crazy. Okay. And so, <laughs> I know all Full Moon fans are gonna be happy when it releases. Um, what was it that made you want to like spin off characters and have their own films? You know, was this always the plan? It was always the plan. You know, I okay. did it back when. I mean, I had to convince Paramount. I mean, back in the day, we were distributed by Paramount. So from the very first Full Moon movie, which was Puppet Master, till maybe 30 movies later, they are our distributor. Um, so by the third or fourth picture, I said, you can make more Puppet Masters, make more demonic toys. I said, Man, Doll Man was doing really well. Yeah. I said, yeah, but why don't we why don't we couple? Let, let's do a crossover. How about Doll Man versus the demonic toys? They go, no, that, I think you're going to ruin those franchises. Why and where? And I said, no, because it's cool. You know, Doll Man can kick the asses of those little demonic toys and vice versa. Yeah. Of course, we made it and it was fun. So I've always liked the idea of crossing over and spinning off. And of course, that's what everyone does. I mean, that's all Marvel. Mm -hmm. So you can't even figure it out anymore. The multiverse and the thing is like, oh, my God, yeah. can we make yeah. these stories a little less insane so we can follow them? But so, yeah, so we're going to keep doing that. We have a it's going to take a while because it's tricky to pull this one off. But we have a another Puppet Master spinoff featuring Leech Woman. It is more gross than you oh, okay. can imagine. So we're going to. Yeah. We're going to get that one going uh, soon enough. I can't wait to check that out because uh, she's always been one of my favorites too. her with her and blade, you know, so. So right see. now, you know, one of the things that we also do is I've over the years licensed a lot of weird ass movies that we put mm -hmm. on a streaming site. I and mean, we've got 800. Some, we have a lot of movies. It's, it's probably a penny a movie or some crazy number. It's probably a nickel. However, um, one of the, uh, you probably know Jess Franco, crazy filmmaker, maybe not. He's made a lot mm. of weird movies. And then there's a couple of companies in Europe that have made movies with, you know, stars like Mark Hamill. Anyway, there's this collection called Eurocine. They made some really lurid movies in the 80s. So we just came out. I wish I had it here. I'd hold it up. But we just came out with a, in a VHS big box style box, six of these Euro uh, Cine movies. And we package it really cool and you open it up and we got little mini postcards that are posters of all the movies. So if people want to sign up for a year for Full Moon Streaming, which they should to see all these yes. movies, to see 
demonic toys in a few weeks and subspecies and hundreds of others, um, they not only get to, you know, I think get a really good um, deal and good content. It's $59.95 for the year, but if they sign it for a year, there's three choices now as of tomorrow. You can get the Eurocine box. It's $100 for free. You can hmm. get a 12 Blu-ray collection of all the Puppet Master movies for free. And if you like Evil Bong, you can get the Evil Bong stash box, which is yeah. all, all nine <laughs> Evil Bong movies for freaking free. Exactly. So you're $150, $200 value and the, the, the streaming site for $59.95. Yeah. So more than yeah. that, I don't know yeah. what else. Dude, yeah, you, crazy. you can't you can't beat that because when I signed up, I got the Diana Prince uh whole box <laughs> set. You know, so. yeah, there you go. Yeah, one thing after the other. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll keep making it interesting because yeah, not? you know, you gotta. It's hard. People have limited money. There's a thousand streaming sites. You know, and you know, at the end of the day, you have to be careful. I get that, but mm -hmm. I think our site is kind of like the exploitation movie store of the eighties. It was kind yeah. of so weird stuff. And it's got movies that are sexy too, with boobies. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, people have forgotten about boobies. I think, I don't know what's going on. I guess the world's changed. I shouldn't get, don't go down this path. People have no, forgotten Charles, about Charles, boobies. that's the thing. My, my <laughs> wife, me and my wife, we watch the movies and she loves the boobies. You know, she's always saying there's the boobies. Well, yeah. Cause it's part of yeah, it's vampire movies. I mean, can you imagine a great vampire movie without some boobies? I mean, exactly. You know, I mean, you know, it's it's also a rites of passage. I mean, kids grow up like, okay, that's really cool. And anyway, I, no, I but really that's the thing. Uh, growing up, when I watched Demonic Toys for the first time, and the girl had the flag, and she was standing there, and I'm like, that, that still <laughs> stuck with me to this day. You know, <laughs> see, you see, and everyone. Here's my other theory: everyone who grew up watching these movies, they all turned out awesome. Yeah. You know, you'd ever hear about some insane killer who was a horror film fanatic. No. Yeah, they were, they were. I won't say anything and get all in trouble. But right. you know, when you go to these conventions, as bizarre as a lot of these people look, they're the mm. nicest people in the world. They just that's, yeah. that's what we always say. Yep. Yeah. So I think it's healthy to grow up with all this stuff, including the B words. Yeah. <laughs> it's healthy. It's healthy. We no. turned out pretty good. Yeah. Anyway, forget the so movies. yeah, your, your your listener should sign up to Full Moon Features. They get a choice of three cool items for free, and they get to see all these movies. And we have some really good ones coming up. Yeah.